Welcome back to the channel guys, I'm Mitch from the DIYRecordingStudio.com Today we're going to be looking at the GAR1731 op-amp build, so let's get into it. So today the op-amp we're going to be looking at building is the GAR1731. It is the second op-amp that I built in these VP28s. Its components are somewhat similar to the GAR2520, although these are supposed to have a bit of a cleaner sound. As you might have seen in the last video, these op-amp builds aren't easy. They're quite a tricky build, but if you're careful and patient and take your time, they're definitely doable. If you haven't already, please hit like and subscribe. And if you haven't seen the videos of the previous build relating to this VP28 mic preamp, I'll put a link right up here. But that's enough from me. Let's get into it. So welcome back to the channel, guys. And as with the last build, the GAR2520, with this uh, GAR1731, you're going to want to start by sorting out all your resistors. It makes the job a little quicker. So if you check their values and put them on a piece of paper like this, just makes it quicker to grab the components um, and then you can easily place them. And some of the tools you're going to need for this build are a small conical tip iron. You're going to need a magnifying glass, something with a light maybe like I use here. They're pretty cheap to get. Um, you'll also need some good solder wick just in case you make a mistake or they recommend uh, using a desoldering station which is a better option if you make any mistakes it's good to get one i'm about to get my first one really soon not that i often make mistakes but there's the odd time where i need to use some solder wick and it's not the tidiest solution um, you'll also need a small screwdriver with a small shaft so you can bend your resistor diode resistor and diode leads That'll just make the job of bending the legs neat and easy and you won't risk snapping off any of the legs on those resistors or diodes. And the first thing you wanna start with are the small bag of caps. And the first components to place are these two yellow caps that are the same value. And then there's uh, three other blue capacitors. You wanna check the value of C1, it's 680p, and the other two are 10p for C2 and C3. So make sure you place them in the right spots on the board. And then the next thing to do is to start soldering the legs. So all you have to do is start from the outside and work your way in. So start with the legs on the outside, solder those, and then snip the legs that you've soldered and then get easier access to the ones closer in the middle of the board. And it'll just make the whole job a lot easier if you do it this way. And then you want to grab the transistor bag that has Q3 and Q4 with the transistors BC560C. And make sure when you're soldering these transistors in that they match up with the semicircle line on the semicircle part of the actual transistor. Uh, it's really crucial to orientate these correctly. And then after that, we need to do the four diodes and they are D1A, D1B, D2, and D3. And with the diodes, you wanna make sure that they are correctly orientated as well. So the black dots, the black band uh, indicates the cathode and that inserts on the hole that is uh, shown with a green circle. So if you have those circular um, slots on the board, that's where the black ring side goes and you wanna make sure as you bend these leads, you're bending the opposite leg. So bend the leg over the top that is opposite the black band on the diodes. And then once these are done, you can flip the board over and solder the legs. And once again, just work from the outside in. It makes this so much easier if you do it that way and take your time. And then you wanna grab the small bag of transistors marked Q5 and Q6, and they have the transistors valued BC550Cs. And as always, you wanna make sure once again that these transistors are orientated correctly so the semicircles line up correctly on the PCB. And when you solder these, make sure as always um, that you solder a leg at a time. So solder a leg on one transistor, then swap to the other transistor and solder a leg there. And this just helps with uh, preventing overheating the transistors while soldering. So make sure you're not rushing them or holding the iron on there for too long. And then it's time to start on the resistors and the install order for those 
is first start with R10, R9, R7, R1, and R6, and get them all in place, and then solder them in place, and then snip the legs. And basically what will happen is that you'll work from kind of like the middle and work your way outside to the outer ones. So that way it's a bit easier to solder. And then you wanna do the same again for R8, R11, R14, and R15, and then solder those in place. And then you wanna remove the two transistors from the small matched pair bag called Q1 and Q2, and then solder them in place. And as always, just make sure that they are aligned correctly in the correct orientation, matching the semicircle shape on the PCB. And then also you want to place R2, R3 and R4-5 um, and then flip the board and solder each of those. And then there are these two larger half watt resistors to go in place at R2 and R3 and they're pretty obvious because they're the last ones left anyway. And then the last components to go in are these larger transistors and you want to make sure that the printing on the faces of each of these transistors faces towards the center of the board. So you just really have to make sure you get this orientation correct. So the printing that has the uh, type of transistor number on it has to face towards the center of the board. And then the last thing to do is to solder the six mil max pins um, at the base of each pin. Uh, basically you want to put these in place on the board and then flip it over and then solder them in place. And Jeff recommends that do not let the solder get on the pin more than an eighth of an inch above the PCB because then you're going to have problems once you connect it to the main PCB board. And then once that's done, all you need to do is make sure that there are no bridges between the certain pads in the um, directions that are labeled red with red circles. Basically, they're the ones that if you accidentally bridge them, you'll have some issues. Some of the others aren't so crucial, um, but really you shouldn't really have any bridges if you can avoid it because that's gonna be the safest option. Um, then you just want to check that all your components are in place and then you're ready to go and insert them on the main board. And this is the last build video for the entire VP28 series. I hope you've enjoyed it and I'll catch you on the next build. So I hope you enjoyed the build of the GAR 1731. If you want any further info or advice on how to build these, please hit me up in the comment sections down below. And as always, don't forget to hit like and subscribe. I'm Mitch from the DIYRecordingStudio.com. I'll catch you soon.